It's the Task Management and Time Blocking Podcast, Episode 8. As a productivity enthusiast, you're hooked on making improvements. For any number of reasons, you're intrigued by the idea of making progress by continually shaping your behaviors, your apps, and your devices, your system. For that reason, you pay attention to advertisements and you read articles because you want some new ideas, right? But how in the world do you make sense of the hundreds of suggestions made to you each day from people and companies around the internet? So a long time ago, when the internet was just invented, back in the mid-90s, early 90s, you could actually chase down every lead and they were fruitful. But now there are endless rabbit holes to go down. How do you get to the point where you don't try to pay attention to them all or unhook yourself from chasing down bright, shiny improvement objects? Tune into this episode to listen to me and my special guest, Carl Poulain, as we solve this challenging problem together. Welcome to the Task Management and Time Blocking Podcast. Welcome back. And just before we start, I want to remind you of our agenda here on the podcast. So we spend the first part of our discussion explaining and digging into and tearing apart the problem. We want to really know that it's real and its impact on the lives of those who can't solve them. So we're talking about practical problems, everyday problems. Then we're going to pivot into, I guess, what you might call act two, where we work to solve the problem. And while we're solving the problem, I'm actually going to be using a bell to pick out those moments when we come up with something that's brand new. It may not be brand new in the grand scene of things, but it's new to, to, to Carl or I, like a new insight, uh, a new uh, point of view, a little bit of an aha. And if we get to the end of the episode and we don't have an aha, we actually have a buzzer that we play, which shows that... As, as hard as we work, we actually didn't uncover anything new. So let's see what happens, but let's start with a story. It's a conversation between Mike and his friend, Sandro. So this is Mike talking. Hi, Sandro, you won't believe what I found. A new app that does auto scheduling and it uses AI. She says, really, tell me more. He says, it's built in Germany. It's been in development for five years. It uses narrow AI, not just AI. And guess what? It's free. They're doing beta trials. She says, whoa, well, what's it called? I'd like to try it. He says, oh, well, hold on. I think I wrote it down somewhere here. Um, let, me, let me look for it and I'll, I'll send it to you as soon as I find it. Two days later, he calls her up. I'm so bummed. I wrote it, it, it all the details on one of those post-it notes that I stuck to my monitor. And it blew away over the weekend. There's no way I can remember it. It had one of those long German names. I actually got it from a broadcast TV show on a random channel. So I don't even know what show I was watching, what channel it was. It's all gone. And then fast forward to two weeks later. Guess what, Sandro? My friend shared a, a brand new app with me. You got to try it. It's really cool. So let me introduce you to Carl Pelain. Carl is calling us all the way from South Korea. And to let you know a little bit about Carl, he's a renowned productivity and time management coach who has helped thousands worldwide. And he's helped them get better at managing their time, becoming more productive using technologies and strategies that work for them. He's written three books on productivity and time management. And he coaches companies and individuals worldwide in his one-on-one -on -one programs. He's developed a time sector system, something specifically designed for the 21st century. He's passionate, dedicated to helping people become better at managing their time so they can focus on what's important to them. And he puts out YouTube videos, presentations, highly interactive, entertaining, and educational workshops. Carl, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you very much for having me, Francis. It's a pleasure to be here. All the way from cold South Korea, which is yes, yes. <laughs> middle of the night right there. So we appreciate your losing it your is. sleep to spend time with us. <laughs> very big contrast. Normal, normal day in the life of me. Start early, finish late, and try and get enough sleep somewhere. 
I, I admire, I admire. Yeah, we, we, we welcome you. I'm so glad to have you. Uh, let's dig into the problem. It's the, mm. it's what I call the bright, shiny object problem. Mm -hmm. And if you're listening in, you may have resonated with the story that I shared between Sandra and Mike, where perhaps you've also had a feeling that you are looking at too many improvement opportunities that you have opened, opened up the floodgates and now there's lots of them coming at you. And maybe you're feeling a sense of being overwhelmed. And I, I compare it to trying to eat or at least taste everything that's presented to you in an advertisement. So the average person gets, I forget how many hundred advertisements per day, if you're living in North America, for example. And if you decide to taste everything that you see in an advertisement or eat, a little bit of everything that you see in any given day, you probably burst. So there's no way you can control or no way you can engage in your diet based on advertisements. Yet, Carl, isn't that what some of us do when well, we consume? Yeah, it suggestions? is. Actually, I, I think I remember it's something like we get 3,000 adverts a day Lovely. coming at us from, from our phones, from buses, from you know departments wherever you are you're just going to hit an advert some ways apparently it's about on average in north america it's three thousand a day um but there is a bit of a problem if you're in the productivity world is because uh, fortunately our brain is very good at filtering so we tend to ignore the adverts we're not interested in but you notice the things you are interested in you know if i personally if i see the word productivity it's like whoa <laughs> my eyes are ah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um i can be scrolling through something you know anything randomly and i'm just I see the word productivity or time management and my eye zooms in on it and it's one of the best things about our brains but it's also a bad thing for our brains. But I remember, I, I can't remember who did this. Somebody gave a really good analogy on this. It's like, if you see a car that you really, really like, and it's like your dream car, it's the one that you want to buy. And, you know, wherever you are, you finally, eventually you, you buy it. Right. What you'll notice is the next day, you'll see hundreds of people driving the same car. Because right. your brain now is going, I'm filtered. This is this is the car. <laughs> Every other car just blends into the background, except the one you like. So right. I'm a huge Range Rover fan. And we don't get many Range Rovers in Korea. We, there are a few, but not many. And my radar for Range Rovers is, I can see them. You need I to buy one, them in dark. That'll <laughs> yeah. fix the problem, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's weird how your brain works like that. But... You know, that's where a lot of the problem is, is that we are, you know, our brain is just, it's designed to spot patterns and we tell them the pattern. And, you know, if in my case, and I, as you say, in your case, you see the word productivity or time management, ooh, and there you go, you're clicking. In the States, they call it catnip for cats, yeah. which is like, mm. you know, a, 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 a kind of a food or a meal that a cat cannot resist. And I think it comes originally from that early hit because there was that there was a point where we didn't care about productivity and it just seemed to be a burden, right? Mm. And then for some reason we came across something and we tried it and it worked. And the feeling of going from failure and ignorance to knowledge and improvement was intoxicating. And for us as productivity enthusiasts, we want more and more and more of that. And maybe that's where that filter came from. What do you think? It, it probably does. I mean, it, it's, it is, our brain is, I mean, if you think about it, we've got five senses. Actually, we have more than that, but we've got five main senses, you know, sounds, you know, smell, sight, touch. And that's a lot of input coming into our bodies every day at any moment in time. But fortunately, we're very good at filtering it out. And yeah, if we go back hundreds of thousands of years, you know, it was food. Right. And shelter and safety. And those were the main things. Oh, life was so simple back then, wasn't it? <laughs> right. Right. We didn't have to worry about survived. productivity tools and apps and things. It was just like find food, find shelter and stay safe. <laughs> right. So there's something primeval going on is what you're saying. There right? is. Yeah. We accept that for us, you know, we, 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 instead of it being about food, it's about, I think it's about improvement. It's about the Delta. It's a, some dopamine yeah. that we get from being able to chase down an improvement, try it, it actually worked, 
and we could see ourselves being better at the end of it. Because if we if we really want to, if we're ambitious and we really want to grow and learn, this is like, this is awesome, <laughs> right? We could find. Oh yeah, it's, it's better than it was back in the day when the when the internet was first invented or first rolled out or back in 1993, four, five, productivity books were something you went to the, remember you go into the library and go to mm -hmm. the productivity section mm. and you wanted to see if there was a new book. Mm. <laughs> it was like, oh, <laughs> something new. And you got all excited one. because, yeah. and, and the, the number of books that you could read was really, was really small. And well, it's also actually similar to the, the you know, the self-help industry in general is, yes, you know, back right. in the 70s and 80s, it was all tapes yeah. and well, people would put, had... you know, buy the tapes. And you know, there was people, yeah, it was Jim Rohn, uh, Zig Ziglar, uh, Brian Tracy, and I Tony Robbins, in the 1980s, yeah, yeah, 20s, 1980s, Tony 20 Robbins, video, 20 audios, yeah, yeah, and then and um, uh, Les, Les Brown. I mean, yep. all these guys did Brown. these tapes, and they were they're brilliant. I mean, even today, you can actually go back and listen to them, and they're brilliant still. But right. you know, the choice, you're right, the choice was actually quite limited, there was only about maybe 10 in total who were famous enough to get your attention. And, and you, you know, if you think about it back then, it was really expensive to produce, you know, a, a, you know, a series of takes. And I think Brian, Brian Tracy's takes were about, you know, you buy a pack of 10. It was like chapter one, chapter two. And it was like, you know, and you put them in the car. And it, but to, for Brian Tracy to do that, he had to have a lot of money. But today... You don't need any money. I can, you know, anyone can just put a blog post together, put it on Medium or or Reddit or something, and boom, you're a productivity expert. So it's it's totally different game now. Right. It's 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 almost as if we we loved we loved the hit that we got originally, right? We decided that things are better because we didn't have to go to the library, we didn't have to get the tapes and put them in the car. Now we can have access to all these different sources and we opened up our sort of our channels to receive them all. Because mm. the more the merrier, right? If we had a hit, <laughs> if I had a, if I did a productivity program and I remember reading Stephen Covey and I could, I remember, I can hear his voice, begin with the end in mind. And that's <laughs> yes. from 1995 or six, because <laughs> I played it so often that Many times, yeah. hearing, he'll hear, I can still hear his voice going through the seven habits. Mm. Sharpen the saw. And I can yeah. still remember all of his like, catchphrases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those limited, those limited channels, you know, it seemed as if we benefited once the channels became open. And we could, as like you said, we could get on Medium and you can find 500 articles. This is like... Oh, easy. We, we really do act as if the more, the merrier. But is there, the more yeah, there is the this, merrier? Yeah, um, you know... The, the problem is, is that um, we know, like, uh, even going back from the designer, Dieter Rams, you know, the guy who's famous for Braun, um, he, he's, I think his motto was, less is more. <laughs> but he was the one who was fighting that in the 1980s, probably not, actually, because he was at Braun, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, he was fighting that. He was keeping, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shavers, but he, he made things like record players. And actually, if you see his first tape machine, it looks like the first iPod, because he was Johnny Ive's hero. So Johnny <laughs> Ive was hugely influenced by Dieter Rams. Um, and, you know, he's still in his 90s. He's still around his Dieter Rams. Amazing guy. But his philosophy was less is more. At a time when we were breaking out into this more is more and we right. want more and we want more and Dieter right. Rams to his credit stuck to his principles all his life and it's probably why his design is still so iconic today because right. he didn't jump on that bandwagon and go okay add more add more add more because people want more and we think we want more but actually more is what gives us i i think uh you know i mentioned before to you in the pre pre-talk about the paradox of choice which was a book written by barry schwartz um he did a great ted talk if you don't want to read the book by the way there is the ted talk it's on youtube it, it's from 2006 it's still it's about 20 minutes long but it's a brilliant ted talk but he explains it so well that you know, we live in the Western civilized society where, you know, we're, we're living in abundance now. 
And so what do we have? Well, freedom, because we can choose the freedom to choose. So we, I think he gave an example. If you go in to buy some salad dressing, and this is back in 2005, there was something like 225 different salad dressings in the supermarket. I mean, how do you make a choice? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad I live in Jamaica for some reasons. And one of the reasons is that there's not that many choices <laughs> and certain <laughs> things are limited and I like it that way. Yep. But, for, but for us productivity people, I feel as if we've, we've, we've done the exact opposite of the smart designers that you describe, which is we, we, we have, we're in a business of consuming bright, shiny improvement objects as fast as we can. And to get as many of them in as we can, to, I, I give you an ex example of what we have to deal with for the task management and time blocking virtual summit coming up in March. I have a list of 270 thought leaders in productivity. Mm. <laughs> and that's not all of them. This is actually, this is just those who care about task management somewhat. This is mm. not everybody because there are others in other fields. That's a heck of a lot. A lot, you know, about producing mm. videos, podcasts, writing books, uh, doing blogs. Um, and then there are productivity apps related to task management. There's at least another 150 to 200 that I found. Hmm. Hmm. Now, they're all going to be, uh, these lists are going to be available at the summit, but they, you know, in, in a real, in a real sense, what, what value are these two lists? It's kind of well, exactly. be better if hmm. someone just came along and just handed you one box of tapes and say, here, this will last you for the rest of the year. There's no, there's nothing else <laughs> like it. So yeah. then it would take away the, it would take away the dilemma of having to, having to decide, right? And you wouldn't be distracted and jumping around like Mike was in the story from one mm. thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. Mm. And therefore adding up and making no improvements as a result. Well, you know, the problem has, I mean, the problem has exploded since around about 2009, because up until then, we didn't really have that much choice. There was GTD, which you had in like a moleskin, because it wasn't digital, it was always paper based. So we had that in a moleskin. We had the Franklin Planner. Wow, I was a Franklin Planner user. Um, brilliant, brilliant system. Um, but the thing is about those systems is you couldn't add anything to it. You know, the competitors could come along and they could try and do something similar, but, oh, we're going to add another section. But if you think about the Franklin Planner, you had all your addresses and telephone numbers in the back. You had a place for your goals, a place for notes and a calendar with a to do list on every day. What more do you need? And it was really tough for competitors to enter the market. And then 2009 came and the smartphone revolution. And then, whoa, I mean, it just went rap rapidly like just a saturated market with so many different ways to do it and and this is our this is ours we've got this color and look at our colors and look at that you know and look at all these additional features which right. is where the bright shiny object problem really comes from is right. because now and even today 2022 that's where we're at now is where these app developers and I'm not criticizing them because they're brilliant people. I know quite a few of them, but what's happening they're now friends. in order to, <laughs> some of them are, but what is, is that what you're doing is, is in order for them to compete, they have to keep adding features. Right. And that's not helping the consumer. In fact, right. that's really causing the heart of the problem in this particular example is this new app has this additional new feature. This makes it better than the one I was looking at last week. And the week before, and it's, that's where the real problem is coming now is way too many features. And, well, to, and the thing is that people who, people like app developers or content creators, and you know, we're content creators, right? Mm -hmm. what, what we do to try and break through the noise is that we try to become better marketers. So yeah. Yeah. The, poor, the poor consumer is now faced with all this better quality marketing, all of which is trying to get his attention to say among the app developers, use me, buy me, download me, try me. Mm. And for us content creators, I have the best idea. This will produce the best results. I have testimonials from God himself. I have, and we, <laughs> you know, we, we give all these great reasons as to why our, mm. our thinking is the best thinking. And mm. the poor consumer is left 
just like following one bright shiny object after another, kind of a deer caught in the headlights, because mm -hmm. there certainly is no one saying, here's how you choose. They're just left to their own devices to sort of face the barrage on their own, no? Mm. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And um, I, I think it's a little, I mean, it it's a really difficult field for people at the moment coming in because it is getting very, very complex. You're right. And it's not just about choice now. It's also about complexity. And what's happening is it doesn't help with, I suppose, people like me on YouTube. <laughs> who are, who, you know, I mean, actually, one of the things I won't do is I will never review apps um, because it's that's not what I do. And I don't want to add to the problem. So I, I, I do talk about the apps I use because that's part of what I want to show. This is how I'm using these apps. But you know, I get emails pretty much every single day now from app developers saying, uh, we'd really like your YouTube channel. They always start with that one. We really like your YouTube channel. I think, oh, thank you very much. Um, would you mind uh, reviewing our app? We'll pay you um, on your channel. Now you say, I'm sorry, I don't do that. I only feature apps that I use. So, you know, in me case, it's to do is Evernote. Um, and I play my hobby projects, which are like Apple Notes and uh, Reminders, but they're just hobbies because I'm really curious about what Apple are doing. But I don't look at anything else anymore. I just stopped because it was getting ridiculous. Right. <laughs> it was about three years ago, actually. It wasn't the bright, shiny object because I, I had no intention of changing, but I thought, oh, I'm in this productivity field. I need to know what's going on with the apps. Right. But about two years ago, I just said, no, this is getting ridiculous. It's almost every week as some new app that everyone's you, talking about. How could you keep up? No, you can't. You um, couldn't. You'd do, yeah. a, you'd do a show. Even if you did a show every day, you, there's it, no well, yeah, you're right. that you, and what would you say each time that, oh, you finally found the answer <laughs> every day. Yeah. And your there is no like, answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, yeah. and pity the poor person who, who, you know, let's say he, 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 he and I've seen, I've seen, they, they do have podcasts that focus on apps hmm. and it, the poor person who logs in and watches each one and tries and actually follows the advice mm. ends up trying a brand new app each week. And then mm. what progress do they make? Or even well, exactly. when it comes to behavior, same thing, right? Well, it then comes down to the question is, what are you actually trying to achieve here? Are you trying to be on the, you know, the, app, the productivity app gravy chain? That's great. I mean, there's no problem with that, but that needs to be, you know, expressed. That is my goal here. Or are you wanting to become more productive? You know, that's where it comes down to. Most people, unfortunately, think, no, I'll stay on the gravy chain for a little bit longer. Right, right. And I, gravy meaning the money, the money train in particular, or just the, the gravy of dopamine? It's the productivity gravy chain. It's, it's just going round and round and round. There's more, okay. you know, there's more being added all the time. And, uh, right. you know, it's, it's just going round and round in circles. But if that's what you enjoy doing, and I know some people who say, I love playing with these new apps. Well, that's great because they've expressed that. They've identified that that's something they enjoy doing. There's no problem with right. that. Right. But the problem is if you're doing that and you're trying to tell yourself, I am, fine, I am becoming more productive because you're not. Right. Right. Because you're not. You think you are, but you're not. You think all of that motion should add up to some progress. And it really doesn't. Yeah. It, yeah, as I say, you need to be very clear about what you're wanting to do here. I mean, I I look at I used to look at other apps as a bit of a hobby, but that's how I described it. It was a hobby. I had no intention of changing. <laughs> I was just curious about what other you know apps were doing, um, but I expressed that, and so it was very clear in my mind. This wasn't about trying to find a better productivity system, because I felt my system was great. I was just what's going on in the productivity app world these days. Right. And so right. I, that was, but I, you know, that was the problem is I, I mean, I think I'm sure you've been on it. We, we have been on that train. <laughs> we have been, we've been, we, oh, another new app. It's going to solve my productivity problems. Uh, it never does. But then you might think you could go cold turkey, right? And then say, okay, I'm not going to. And then yeah, we, that fear of missing out. You there is the fear of missing out, yes. All of a sudden, it seems like somebody will say something to you and you're like, well, what's that? 
you know, like AI. You know, the oh, last time, the last time AI. that happened to me, yeah. the fear of missing out, the last time it happened to me was Notion about three years ago. Uh, Everyone uh, was on the Notion yeah, yeah, telling me, you've got to try Notion. Gotta... Yeah. So I did. And I jumped into it. I thought, OK, I'm going to try with this. I spent eight hours playing around trying to get it set up how I wanted it. And I went, whoa, stop. It was Notion that kind of taught me my valuable lesson. Stop doing this because it's not improving you. It's not improving your productivity. It's actually destroying your productivity. I'm, that's right. not, I don't mean Notion destroyed my productivity. What I mean is right. it's, it's, it was that looking at these apps and then wasting eight hours in a day um, <laughs> trying to get it set up right. with the right colors, right typefaces, right boards and uh, databases. Oh, I was having so much fun, but I wasn't actually doing any work. Right, right, right. It, it's as if the, 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 the half an hour you used to spend evaluating an app, because the first app, you ever used and the app that you use today you had to do some evaluation before using it you had oh, to yeah, of course you, you had to spend mm. some time maybe you spent a half an hour there and mm. then and then you chose and then you then you got to work and the, the presence of the app has sort of receded into the background it's become like like your glasses you don't think about your glasses when you're wearing them mm. you just wear them and it kind of they yeah. kind of disappear into the background but that half an hour that you spent and that you invested doesn't scale so somewhere no. between half an hour and eight hours, a real problem starts. So yeah. spending more time doesn't give you more reward. I think that's no. what, what, what Braun is all about. And I, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what we're saying is that something that works in terms of trying to find new apps or new behaviors or new habits or practices probably won't scale. The way it that you use scale, the search though. for it doesn't scale. But there's another problem as well is, OK, let's say that you spent that 30 minutes, 40 minutes, even six hours, eight hours. And you said, I'm going with this app. What's the time cost now in terms of having to learn how to use that app? Because your previous app, like I've used Evernote for like 13 years nearly now. I mean, mm -hmm. I, can, I can open it up blindfold. I can use it blindfolded. I know the keyboard shortcuts. I am mm -hmm. so fast with Evernote because mm -hmm. I've used it for so long. But if I decided I'm going to stop using Evernote, I'm going to try Notion or OneNote or Obsidian now. How, okay, I've got to evaluate it. So there's a time cost there. Right. But the unknown time cost, the one that is really difficult to measure is the learning curve because that really slows you down. Plus you've got to take all your notes out of your previous notes app and move it into the new notes app. I mean, the time cost is huge. And right. while that is happening, you're not growing. Your your system isn't getting any better, right. and you must you're going to have to really, really, really hate the app you're using today for you to really have any benefit from switching. Right, it's, it's a sw the switching cost. There's a there is. It, it's it reminds me of moving houses, moving your home. Mm. That there's the searching for the home. There's the um, moving into the new home. There is making the new home as productive, comfortable, and effective as the old home. And inevitably, whenever I've moved, I've always underestimated that switching cost. <laughs> yes. Just I've just switch. moved house. Oh, you know what I'm I talking about? I've just moved about. house, yes. <laughs> I know that one. It seems as if it's going to be that hard until no. you're in the middle of it and you're like, I can't even plug my device in because there's no plug in the right spot where I need to. <laughs> and then I need to, uh, then how, how do... Even basic things become really, really hard. But I yeah. think that's, the, that's the, 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 the challenge for most people is that they are inundated with choices. There is no good thinking about how, does, how do you make a switch? What do you mm -hmm. switch to? How do you mm -hmm. decide between the switches? And then there's a discounting of the switching costs, which, you know, to content creators, we tend not to emphasize the switching cost. If you want to pick up a new mm -hmm. behavior, sure. Nice, bright, shiny, new behavior. Sure, pick it up. And we discount all of those switching costs. The same for app developers. You know, just download it. Try it. You'll see it works. It's nice. Mm -hmm. And they discount mm -hmm. it also. And mm -hmm. it all seems as if it should be easy. But those of us who have been through a few changes and tried a few bright, shiny objects, I think we're weary. So I think it's time for us to talk about some solutions now. What do you, yes, what do you okay. <laughs> yeah. By well, the way, just before we finish there, I should yeah. just say one of the things that I've, I, I, I've met David Allen um, 
once over here in Korea. Now he's been on my podcast as David. Um, and one of the things that blows me away about David Allen is his productivity app of choice is something called e-productivity that he started using in round about 2000. He's been using it now for 22 years. They software? don't even At make, least. it is software, yeah. They don't even make it. I mean, it's part of Lotus Notes. I mean, I thought Lotus Notes oh. died a long time ago. Lotus Notes got bought by IBM, but he's right. still using the same system for 22 years. Now, that told me something about productivity. Right, right. It does. It does. And it, it probably has lessons about switching costs. He's not searching for a replacement all the time. No. So he doesn't no. spend it. Good. Okay. So, no. what are some solutions? How should people behave differently? with respect to not chasing these bright, shiny objects and falling into the traps that we talked about before. What are some initial thoughts? Well, the first thing is, if you are brand new to productivity, you do need to do it. You need to go and have a look. But there are some parameters that you really want to be thinking about first, one of which is, how would you like to see your task list every day? Okay, let's just start with the task list, because so you're, some people like to see a list. Mm -hmm. Some people are more visual and want to see those cards like Trello or Asana does, you know, the cards and they can right. move them around. That's to me, whenever I'm coaching somebody and they say, I need to, I need a system. That's the first thing I do. Well, what do you want to see? Do you, in the morning when you start the day and you want to see, well, what do I need to do today? Well, what do you want to see? Right. That's so, usually the first question. Well, there, there's something slightly before that, right? But as you said, mm -hmm. which is that, if you're just starting out, so I'm going to interpret if just starting out to mean that you are using memory and random other practices. So your bits of paper, post-it notes. <laughs> your your system is memory, personal memory, plus bits of paper, like post random bits of whatever you can find, tissue, mm. envelope, yeah, yeah. post-it yeah. note, pad, whatever, an mm -hmm. app here and there, but it's all it's all kind of random. So there's a, a memory plus random stuff. So you mm -hmm. have a, a, a system that's really not working mm -hmm. and it can only manage a certain number of tasks effectively, like two, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe 10, <laughs> maybe 15, <Yeah. laughs> but it's okay. small, yep. right? Yep, yep. You're, not, mm -hmm. you're not talking a whole lot. You're not, you're not trying to do, mm -hmm. you're not someone who's trying to build a building. You're not in construction. Mm -hmm. You're not in a profession where you need to build these massive multi-year project plans. So you're probably mm. in a profession where you can get by kind of one activity after another. Maybe you're emergency, you're an emergency doctor. Or well, something. it's kind of like, when did I last do the bed linen? When did I last wash the bed linen? I can't remember. Well, it's time to wash it. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember when I last did it. Okay, maybe it's time to wash the bed linen. You, know? <laughs> you mean it just occurs to you? Yeah, it's just As like to it being planned. there's a funny smell in the bedroom. When did I last smell? Oh, oh I, okay. I, that, yeah. that, 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 that productivity because... system, you know, it's a really good one, actually. <laughs> All random, random thoughts. So someone it's when a... something goes wrong, it sort of alerts you. Oh, there's a funny smell in the bedroom. But um, when something and goes wrong and the car is broken down and the, yeah. the dog's not fed and my wife <laughs> is leaving me or my husband is leaving me. Yeah. All of a sudden yeah, that... it occurs to you that. Yeah, that, that productivity some of these system. Things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they need a, a system. So they come, yeah. they come to you and mm. you help them to organize, think about their tasks first. Mm. And you ask them, do you where do you want your tasks? So you start to assemble. It's more about not where, but how do you want to see it? Okay. So um, for, because for some the, people say to me, I I I because I've had a few clients who say, Oh, I love I love pen and paper. Great. Let's do it in pen, let's do it in the notebook. And you start, it's not ideal. They're used but, to using it. They're not yep, used to using uh, a smartphone. And they're going to use it. That's the so thing. So you, you reduce the switching cost by, mm -hmm. by keeping them in pen and pencil. So you keep them in the modality that they've been using and you ask them to make as small a change as possible to move to the next level. Yeah, because the big solution for me is it's the system, not the, 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 the app. It's the system that you're using. So right. whether, you do, whether you do it first on paper, you know, in a notebook, or whether you do it with the built-in apps on your phone or computer, it doesn't really matter, but right. um, it's about building that system first. That's the, that's the number one. It, it's not the app. If you start with the app, you'll be, you get filtered into 
the system that the app developer wants you to use, which might not be the right system for you. So the solution is start at systems level, not app level. And are you also seeing that the if you're coming from memory and random bits of paper, you need a kind of a first landing spot. Like you're going to the moon and you need a landing. You need a, you need a first system to kind of hold everything together that's more reliable than memory. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's an, a single notebook, or if they're digitally minded, I, I say a notebook, it doesn't have to be. It can be, you said, no, no, I, I'm fully, perfectly happy on computers. I love my phone. I'm always on it. I'm iPad or whatever. Great. Let's go digital. But all right. Let's, let's call that the step one change then, because that's a change we've all been through. All productivity mm -hmm. enthusiasts have been through step one, where we mm -hmm. went from, again, memory plus random bits of paper and random, random, random mm -hmm. to something looking like a system, whether it's on paper, on a phone, on a computer, but it, it, it looks coherent and it, you're able to manage way more tasks effectively. So your capacity increases and you make that, yeah. that change. So mm -hmm. when people go from, I agree with you, when people go from random, from memory and random to having their first system, I, it's kind of a beginner's move because it's your first move. Mm -hmm. And at that point, when you make that first move, you probably aren't looking at a whole lot of apps and a whole lot of, you, you're not, you haven't had that experience and you're not, you're not like us who, you know, every time we see the word productivity, we, you know, we start salivating mm -hmm. and getting excited. Well, you know, you're going to think of it this so way. It's beginner. like, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, I, I don't know what they do in Jamaica, but in the UK, when you learn to drive a car, it's always a one liter small car. It's not a Ferrari. <laughs> you know they don't what teach do you to drive they don't <laughs> teach you to drive a ferrari they teach you in a small one liter little car and my first car after i passed my driving test was uh i think it was an 850 cc mini mini um, mini minor mini mini minor yes brilliant yeah, car yeah. um but you know my parents didn't go out and buy me a ferrari I mean, well they couldn't afford to buy a ferrari anyway but they didn't buy me a souped up sports car with all the all the bells and whistles you know they started me out with a simple i think it was four speed manual gearbox 850 mini austin mini i think it was brilliant car loved it but that is exactly the right place you start right at the you know with the smallest possible thing so that you can learn how to actually do the process which is the right. system so is it fair to say, maybe this is our first insight, that for someone who's making that beginner move, ooh, they, <laughs> the bright, shiny object challenge is not an issue yet. Really, they're just looking to make that first step to something stable and something where it's something somewhat reliable. You're right, but there is the danger of the bright side shiny object right. because so where is, do you go to find the system? <laughs> yeah, where do you was, go to I find the system? Because right? at some point you get tired of the mini. <laughs> you, yeah. start, you start getting that itch, right? Because you, you... Well, it's not that. It's just that most people don't buy the mini. They go on Google and they start looking for productivity and they just get thrown at Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Porsches, you know, that kind of productivity system. It's just too powerful for them at that stage. Right. So, so there's, so the, the, the coaching is to stay simple in, if you're, if you're a beginner and you're using mostly memory, the coaching is mm -hmm. to find anything and use it so that you have some stability and regularity. And yeah. once you do that, however, you will come up against the next improvement because mm -hmm. that first improvement, if it's effective, that first transition, the, the switching costs, were probably moderate because you're using memory. It's minimal, yeah. It's not huge at that point because you haven't invested in anything tangible yet. Mm -hmm. It's really a matter of changing your personal behaviors, which some mm -hmm. people can't do, but it's still, it's still of a, a mental nature for the most part. So someone mm -hmm. who's more experienced though and now has to weed through all of these options, mm -hmm. what sense, how do they make sense of all of the changes and all of the, not changes, but all of the possible changes they could make. Um, well, what, what, again, what, what kind I go, of advice do you give at that point? Well, I go back to, well, what's not working? Mm -hmm. So what's working and what's not working? So 
there's three ba all productivity all good productivity systems have three foundations it's the collecting you need it to be easy to collect all the inputs that are interesting to you or impactful for you you need to organize that somehow somewhere and then you need to be doing the work mm -hmm. um now what normally happens is is that you get to the point where the bright shiny objects are getting brighter and shinier mm -hmm. and you start to focus on the first two collect and organize and you start neglecting the most important one which is the doing so you get hooked on you get hooked on the the improving of the system the collecting and the organizing and then you start looking for like the ai calendar that will organize your schedule for the week and you think oh, oh that will save me so much time because that's where you made the begins <laughs> when you were a beginner so yeah. you're kind of hooked on making those level improvements to your system as opposed to looking at the overall outcome at the end yeah and it's yeah, okay. like um, I agree with that. Yeah. you know, I've, I've noticed that uh, the latest thing, and again, I, I think Obsidian is a good app. There's no problems with it. But what I'm seeing on the on websites and blog posts about Obsidian is, oh, wow, I can connect my notes together. Well, I was thinking, well, yeah, you've been able to connect your notes together for a long time in most apps. But oh, no, but it's all done automatically. I'm going, oh, all right. OK. But you see, that might be great. But the thing is, is this speeding? Is this helping you to get more work done? Right. That is and always I, the question. And I think because that's where the that's where the they don't ask that question. Right. I think that's the antidote. The ultimate antidote to the bright shiny object is it's kind of the question you asked before. I think what, what am I trying to accomplish? Yeah. And if what I'm trying to accomplish is a material improvement in the way I do my task management and mm -hmm. my time blocking, mm -hmm. then it's more about my trying to find the the solution to my problem than it is my reacting to the latest advertisement that i saw well yeah and the problem is with the latest advert that you saw is that that tells you the problem that you've got and you didn't realize <laughs> you had that problem you know i didn't oh realize God, I that, a problem you know, i didn't, even I didn't know. you know before obsidian i didn't realize that i had a problem with my notes not connecting together but you know for 12 years I was fine. I was fine. <laughs> Suddenly I didn't know I'm what thinking, AI was. I've got a I problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have a problem. That's the thing is my system works. Right. That's the thing. And Obsidian or any of those apps, I think there's another one called Roan Research as well, which is very similar. It's not going to make me more productive. It might, you know, connect a few notes together. Think, oh, I didn't know. Really... But, you know, I use tags. So everything's connected anyway. So <laughs> why do I need it to do it automatically? I like actually the control, to be honest. Um, that's one of my most important features for me is that I'm in control. I don't want the computer because the computer doesn't know that I, if I have COVID, it doesn't right. know if I didn't sleep well last night. It doesn't know if I feel fantastic. It doesn't know I had an argument with my wife this morning or not, right. you know? AI is at its very beginning at the moment, and we are human beings. And I think we've got to start trusting ourselves to make the right decisions and not try and delegate it to some computer that doesn't know you and will never know you. Right, right. I, I, the coaching I give people is, listen, there's only really one change you should be trying to make right now. And then the next, and then the next, and then the next. Yes. But you really should be, you know, trying to figure out how do I make the one change I need to make? And I tell them, mm -hmm. I, I believe there's a Pareto effect when it comes to these improvements that 80% mm -hmm. of the, the, the difference you want to make will come from 20% of the changes it's true, that you absolutely. can now make. So it's actually mm -hmm. a small change you're looking to make. You're looking to mm -hmm. make the best small change, but it's going to be small and it's probably not going to be in an advertisement and it's probably not going to come from a friend. <laughs> it's probably not going to be in, in a random blog it actually is probably going to take some self-reflection so that you can go and find the exact solution that you want. So you, you kind of need to be able to define it. Like a, if my car, my car won't start and my, my mechanic tells me that it's the starter that's bad. So I don't go, you know, opening car magazines and looking at, oh, look, <laughs> look at this new thing that they have, new muffler. Oh my God, they have this new intake manifold. Oh, look at this, <laughs> look at this new, look at these tires. <laughs> That's all a waste of time. It's better for me yeah. to focus on where can I find the right starter? It's a fairly small item in a car. Mm -hmm. 
but where do mm -hmm. I need to, where can I find the one that my car needs in order for it to function? So the bad, the one is, the one still kind of works, but it's going out. So I need to replace it. So I'm, my, my search is now narrowed down to the one part that would make the biggest difference. Not mm -hmm. all of the full range of parts. So in a, in a way, I ask people to ignore everything and focus on the one. What yeah. do you think of the advice though? No, it's absolutely right. I mean, you can't change everything all at once. If you did, you'd be completely lost. It's because, you know, it takes a while to build habits. And if you're changing a whole system, and that means changing apps, like particularly if you're changing your task, my calendars, you, you can probably change them quite regularly because the you know, calendar is just a calendar. It just tells you where you need to be on a specific day. But your task manager and your notes is a different thing altogether because those are really personalized and they need to work for you and it's like you know again we can give the you know with my mini if the starter motor went on the mini there's no point in me going out and buying a lamborghini starter motor because a it's not going to fit and b is either going to be way too powerful for the mini and just blow the whole thing up right. <laughs> you know you know right. i just i need to just get a starter motor that's going to fix that problem right. and that's the important thing right and i think that's where people people have the the, the difficulty because if they can't they can't figure out that it's a starter. They will try the tires. They, they sometimes will buy a, try to go buy a whole new car. Mm -hmm. And the switching yep. costs, that, or they'll, they'll, they'll change apartments. Mm. You know, there's, there's too much noise in my, in my apartment from my neighbors. I don't want to go talk to them. So I'll move instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you move, you, you pick up a whole host of other challenges and issues. Because yeah. the switching cost is so high. So mm. it, it, almost like the most effective change to make is the one that produces the greatest result. And I think the free benefit that goes with that is that it usually, it, it may carry the, the smaller switching cost. Yeah, I mean, really, to me, it's about really asking the question, what do I want to accomplish today? Yeah, or that that's the productivity question that I ask myself pretty much. Well, I do it the night before. So what do I want to accomplish tomorrow? That's my and you know, it's a really simple switch. It's 10 minutes before you close the day, just 10 minutes, ask yourself, what do I want to accomplish tomorrow and write it down. Now, if you think in the world of productivity apps, I could have a list of things in Notion or Obsidian, I could have a list of things in Todoist or to do or TikTok or whatever. But really, the only thing that matters is what I want to accomplish tomorrow. And that can be done on a piece of paper and left on my desk for tomorrow morning. And the thing I always say to my clients is, if that works for you, don't change it because it's working. Mm -hmm. Because, that, and because the, the 80% of what they're doing is working. It's working. I mean, if it's, if it's, it's a case of like, that and then they might say, oh, but I really want to go digital. I said, well, why? <laughs> because your system is working as it is now. Let's, let's, let's call that the second insight, which is <laughs> switching costs. So I've never, mm. heard, I've never heard a podcast or anybody talk about switching costs between productivity apps, mm. behaviors, um, devices, uh, or, or to, go, to be more granular, um, task management, um, note-taking, and calendar apps on the digital side. Or if you're on the paper side, the journal that you're using, because that mm -hmm. that that has, I remember when I I used to have the date a day runner, mm. and f the reason I didn't have a a file of fax or one of the others was that day runner was available in the store, I could get mm. the refills, and <laughs> fortunately <laughs> I picked I picked a system where I think I deliberately did it because I didn't I had a choice of picking another system that was, went with a training. And I mm. said, I, I don't see that stuff in the store. So let me pick the one that's similar. So even if you're using paper, the switching cost, back then you had to order, if you couldn't get the paper, you'd have to order the paper refills. Mm. Mm. You know, it was like this whole thing. But the switching costs were, uh, are a factor even if you're only using paper. Mm. And I think the, 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 the most of us under, maybe this is a, one of those, what do they call them? Um, psychological biases mm -hmm. where you underestimate the switching cost of a productivity mm -hmm. system. Carl, you need to you need to coin a phrase. For oh, that. it's yes, it's it's the sunk cost dilemma uh, or something. I know what you mean. It's a sunk, sunk cost, cost dilemma or something. Yeah, that's it. The sunk cost fallacy or something. You under 
but but apply it to productivity productivity yes. system. Well, I've invested all this time now. I may as well continue. <laughs> <laughs> I may as well continue changing. It's opposite of the sunk cost fallacy. The sunk cost yeah. says that you don't change because you've invested too much in the current. Yeah. It's the opposite. So I, maybe it, I, I'll leave it to you to, 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 to come up with a, a, a phrase. Well, if that. you're going down a productivity hole, if you want to become more productivity, stop digging. That's right. the way I would put it. Just stop, stop, stop digging. digging for rabbits. Yeah. Right? You... And, and focus on the improvement that you need to make that's going to move the delta, move the, move the needle the most. You know, you know, the thing that I've noticed with productivity, and this is basic, based on what I found worked for me and as what worked for so many of my clients is there are some just some really basics and none of it involves bright, shiny objects. It's like beginning the day and looking at your list of things to do and saying, right, I'm going to do these and closing the day and making sure you've got a plan for the next day. It's basically have a plan where you put that plan doesn't really matter. If you start each day with a plan, you are going to increase your productivity massively. Mm -hmm. But the reason is most people don't even start the day with a plan. They just think, oh, my to-do list will tell me what to do tomorrow. And they open it up and there's 70 tasks for today. It ain't going to happen. It doesn't matter what to-do list you're going to have. You're not going to do 70 tasks today. Not unless they're all like 30 second tasks. You might do it that way, but no task is. Well, if you're putting 30 second tasks into a task manager, you, you're, you're using it wrong. wrong. Yeah. Right. But, right. you know, the reality that's, that's of common the, wisdom, though, isn't it? Yeah. The, 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 the start of the day, beginning of the day, the, the, what I intend to accomplish and did I accomplish it? And then closing the Basically, loop on a regular basis. Yep. Is you not, do that and you massively improve your productivity. But it's not very bright, it's not very shiny. And no. it's, it's, it's very not sexy. Unsexy. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, totally it's not sexy. unsexy, but mm. it's, it's typical of, it's typical of the, I, I hate to say lack of discipline, but the business of, it, well, you know, you're right. It your is. Focus. Yeah. It, it, you it's know, like you're, go ahead. Sorry, I, it, it is partly to do with a lack of discipline. And that's probably because of the, the all this choice that we have. We think, oh, we can change right. this, we can change that. But the thing is, is that, right. One thing that I really believe in is that you've got to have a structure in your day. You know, one of the big things is people will say, I'm overwhelmed by email. Well, how much time do you spend on, e you know, how do you manage your email? Well, I just reply, you know, I look at my inbox and reply to the important emails. Well, the thing is, email is just a part of life today and you right. need to spend some time each day dealing with it. So right. block yourself 30 minutes or 40 minutes or an hour each day, depends how many emails you get. Block it in your calendar and just make sure you do it every day and you'll never have a problem with email. But most people think, oh, I can't do that. I'm too busy. Well, you've got to do it sometime. When are you going to do it? If you don't do it today and you leave it till tomorrow, now you're going to need two hours. Right. Where are you going to find two hours if you're already very, very, very busy? You know? I think there's a corollary to the switching business that you just, you're introducing there, which mm. is that probably the simplest changes you need to make don't involve a new app. They don't involve nope. getting any advice. They're more a function of, I think, getting really quiet and figuring it out on your own. Well, one thing I wrote down in my notes, uh, because I didn't want to forget it, because I just know it's so important, is if you do it yourself without looking at apps and reading blog posts and YouTube, you work it out for yourself and it works, the confidence you have will stop you from going after bright, shiny objects. Ooh. And that yes, is what sir. I, that is what worked for me was when I realized after reading GTD and I, I brilliant, brilliant system. And I thought, this is great. And I used it for a while and it worked reasonably well, but I modified it, changed it, worked it, uh, updated it for the new modern digital world that we live in today and I did this on my own without reading lots of other blogs and I kind of found my own way and it I'm going wow look at the what I'm doing every day it's amazing you know if my wife like today we I washed the car vacuumed the car out as a two-hour job I took the dog for an hour's walk with my wife um and I still got all my work done and I don't feel stressed. I don't feel tired. And I think when I have days like today, I think to myself, my system works. And that confidence repeats itself. So it stops me 
from trying somebody else's system because I think, well, that works for them, but it ain't going to work for me. I have found a system. Uh, and that, 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 and you found a method of self-improvement. Yeah. Because your, your confidence, your confidence probably isn't in the system that you currently use. Your confidence comes that you could change it. The fact that you can change it whenever you want at will. Well, no, actually, no, my better. confidence is, I have to be honest, my confidence is in my system now, but it's taken a, it's taken a long time. I, I mean, I made all the mistakes we've talked about. I mean, I'm right, not, right, I'm right. not saying that I'm this monk who's been perfect. You know, all right. these things that we've talked about, I've gone after the bright, shiny objects. I've done it all. But it wasn't until I realized that if you develop your own system, you develop confidence in your system, and that right. will stop you from looking at bright, shiny objects because you think, yeah, that works for them, but this works for me. But I think, aren't you also saying that when you want to make the next change, whatever it is, you're mm -hmm. confident about making it? Well, it is, but I'm also now focused on what I need to change. Like, I need right. to be able to collect faster. Right. If I can right, collect right, right. faster and organize right. faster, I can do more in right. less time. And right. when I can do more work in less time, I have more time to spend with my dog washing the car. I, I enjoy washing the car. Right. <laughs> um, you know, more time walking the dog, more time going to the beach, you know, because I'm focused on what's really important, which is the doing. Right. So you're, you're, what I hear you saying is you're, you're in a virtuous cycle of improvement driven by powered by past improvements and your yes. the future the future doesn't need bright shiny objects for you because you're already you're already in a virtuous cycle of improvement and getting better mm -hmm. and making progress and and that only only comes from sort of engaging i had this experience also it only comes mm -hmm. from engaging with your own system on your own it, terms in your yes. own way it doesn't come yeah. from this chase to try and find mm. the answer outside of you. Carl, we're actually Correct. running, we're actually running the time, Carl. Oh my God, it's a time. <laughs> I don't know where it went, but how can people get uh, a hold of you and learn more about what you're doing? Oh, people get in touch with me through my website. Every, you can get to my YouTube channel, podcast and blog from there. So it's carlpulleen.com. And that's okay. get from there. I should just point out one more thing on that though, before yes. I finish. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. You're mentioning about the self-improvement thing, something yes. I learned from Tony Robbins, and it's stuck with me now for about 10 years, which is can I, C-A-N-I, and it's constant and never ending improvement. If you have that attitude about yourself, not about constant and never ending improvement in my apps, right? constant and never ending improving yourself, you will find a way without the shiny objects. And it will come from... Inside as opposed to inside as opposed every to every rabbit hole, every advertisement, every recommendation, every great. Yeah. On that note, on that mm. strong note of can I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Carl, thanks for joining us here on the You're welcome. Path Management and <laughs> Blocking mm -hmm. Podcast. It's been great having you. And you know what? You're gonna come back mm -hmm. because Okay. There'll be, a, there'll be another to. problem for us to, to dig into. There's endless. Oh, problems. I love these problems. <laughs> oh, I can tell. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> so, hmm. guys, as you're listening in, there's going to be a couple, a couple of announcements, a play the music. So, keep listening. There's a bit more to come. Here's a clip from our next episode, and the initial advice he got. He thinks it stops working. The truth is, it is working. It's, as a matter of fact, it's worked so well, it's allowed him to move out to another place. Of course, he doesn't know that. He's just confused. And he wants another set of advice from either the same or a different guru. But he wants something different. And if you want to leave a comment about this episode or any aspect of the work that we're doing here at the task management and time blocking podcast, you can go over to www.replytofrancis.info and send me either a message uh, by text or send me a voice message, a voice note. And as you probably know, we have a couple of places that you can interact with other people, talk about this episode. One is at the community, mightytaskers.scheduleu.org and you'll see the link in the show notes. And the other, of course, is our upcoming Task Management and Time Blocking Summit coming up in March. Two outstanding opportunities to interact with other people about the ideas that you've heard on this podcast or any of the other episodes that are coming up. 
And if you'd like to support the work we're doing, I invite you to click on the Patreon link below to make a donation. And please don't forget to like our show and recommend it to others on iTunes, Stitcher, Google, or whatever past podcast app or service you're using. This is Francis Wade. I'm signing out. I hope to see you on a future episode. And until then, take care and all the best. See you later. <laughs>